Painting your motherboard. Now that may seem very intimidating because you may think there's a high risk of breaking your stuff, but truth is, it's actually very simple and the results are great. You can really make your PC look unique. Because, now don't mind me, and uh, I'm just a PC builder, I'm not an artist, so I can just use a white spray paint on my motherboard. But if you do go ahead and spray paint it white, you could then paint it with whatever pattern you want and really make it unique. It's also what modders do on very high-end custom looped PC builds. So here's a simple tutorial on how to do it and welcome back at Automation PC Use. Now you basically have two ways in which you can go about it. The whole motherboard way or the safer way. Now this one is not unsafe at all but you just need the right paint and to cover up the motherboard properly. So let's start with the simpler and safer way. So first of all, we have the same exact motherboard, so you can also see the different results and you can choose which one you like the best. I think I actually prefer the full cover one, but it's very subjective. Now through the first method, the safer and most partial one, you simply have to dismount whatever you can dismount from your motherboard. That being mostly the VRM heatsinks. Now this being an older motherboard, we have less that we can dismount, but on modern motherboards, you will have a full plate covering the front of the motherboard. So on the back, you'll be able to actually disassemble a lot of stuff and it's gonna just have some simple screws. Here, we had some little pins on the VRM heatsinks, which you have to push out and we can then go ahead and paint the two VRM heatsink, the one chipset heatsink, and they also painted the cooler while I was at it. Pretty simple and it also allowed me to do a repaste on the Nord bridge and on the CPU itself. So it's pretty nice and really it's straightforward. I recommend you guys get some acrylic paint. I find it's also a pretty decent uh, heat transfer. And uh, for those of you wondering, no, this is not conductive, so it's not gonna make uh, your motherboard short out by touching the VRMs. But also the VRM heat sinks, just don't touch the motherboard because they have a thermal pad on the back. Make sure you cover the thermal pad or the parts which are gonna touch your CPU in general with some tape, just to be sure. And with that said, just spray it down and you're gonna be done. You can then mount it back and get this result. It's very easy, takes about 10 minutes to do, and it looks great still. However, if you do want to go with the more in-depth option, people on the internet usually recommend you guys do PlastiDip. Now, what PlastiDip is, is basically liquid plastic, and you just put it on the motherboard. The idea there being it's very easy to remove. Now, the procedure to PlastiDip your motherboard is the same as to paint it, and to be really clear, this is paint. This is not PlastiDip. And the reason why you can paint it, there's nothing really there to short out and you just have to pick non-conductive paint. I will put a link down below to some paint I recommend. But the easy thing is just cover any connector. So as you can see, my 24 pin, my eight pin CPU power connector, all my IO ports on the bottom and all my PCIe slots and even the CMOS battery. And just to make sure, even the BIOS, I just covered with some tape. That took me a good 20 minutes in cutting up everything and making sure uh, I was only covering what I didn't want to paint because the more you cover the rest you paint of course and then I just went ahead and painted it. Now important is you remove your CMOS battery this is very important and the socket is also tricky so the socket covers you get when a motherboard is brand new I wouldn't trust them I think the best go is to put a CPU in there and uh, I recommend you put a stock cooler on top because even if you want to take it off and put a different cooler later stock cooler is gonna save your socket. I'm gonna show you after painting it I basically showed you the socket perfectly clean and that's key. So with that said you can then cover up the motherboard and go ahead and paint it but while painting it make sure you don't hit weird angles. You don't want your paint going into your IO ports or under the taping you've done. If it goes on the circuits themselves that's not a problem and also if you cover some LEDs they are still gonna be able to filter through. However they're gonna be less light so I would cover up the LEDs also but remember if it's just some acrylic paint you can get some acetone and just take it off if you do end up spray painting something you didn't want to spray paint also what paint does is act as an insulator so if you paint somewhere you were not supposed to you turn on your PC and the PC doesn't work you can just remove the paint and it's gonna work again this is not conductive and it's pretty cool so for those of you not believing, this is actually working. I also booted up both motherboards into the BIOS and I'm gonna show you guys them working. And uh, yeah, they work perfectly fine. All RAM slots, or PCIe slots, it's super easy. And uh, this is just a quick video to show you guys how you can customize your PC even more. Do let me know if you want me to show you how to do RAM as well. And as usual in those videos, kind of like in my 
only one water cooler with a few videos i ask you guys if you have any tips of your own because very often you guys are actually better than me at the things i do so if you guys have any tips drop them down below you can help your fellow watchers and also drop a like and a sub to support the channel let me know which one you like the most and see you guys in the next one bye bye